Okay, hello YouTube. Um, today I'm going to discuss the topic of gambits in chess. For starters, what is a gambit and why are people so obsessed with playing gambits? Um, and before we go any further, um, if you like this content and you like some of my other content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. I really do appreciate it. So anyways, a gambit in chess is when we give up usually material, okay, and actually I think it's always material, we give up material in exchange for some sort of compensation. And that could be a lot of things. That could be a concept, like it could be a simple concept, like just controlling the center of the board, if we gain better control of the center of the board. It could be um, time. It could be that you get to develop your pieces a little bit faster, so you have more pieces out in the game. So a traditional gambit, you know, a very traditional gambit in the classical sense of the gambit, would be something like the Evans gambit. So the Evans gambit is a really traditional classical gambit. Uh, white gambits this pawn, and in exchange for this pawn, he gets extra tempo and extra control of the center. So he gets extra time to do what we want to do in the opening phase of the game, which is develop quickly and attack the center of the board. So this is a very classical gambit. It's a gambit where the compensation that we get from the gambit is very easy to understand, right? But not all gambits um, follow this same principle of classical gambit, where we sacrifice material in exchange for something very obvious, or basically the three opening goals, which is development, attacking the center, and you know getting castled quickly. Some gambits go after more abstract concepts. Um, one modern gambit is um, a gambit that's known as the Banco gambit. And this gambit is actually very abstract. Um, black will gambit this pawn, and then after white captures, black will play a6. And of course, white can take the uh, full pawn, and he can, he can grab it. Now what's interesting about this is black actually neither gains um, tempo or space in the middle of the board, because white's pieces are actually going to end up developing much more fluidly than blacks. White's going to be able to play knight c3, and black is going to have to take time to play d6, and he still needs to spend a move to develop this bishop to the long diagonal with g6 and bishop g7. White's actually going to develop faster, so black isn't really up any tempo, and white is going to end up with, um, you know, more space in the middle of the board. So from a traditional sense, what on earth could black be going for here. And of course, um, this gambit is going for something that's, that's, that involves a lot more modern understanding of, of chess. For one thing, black has fewer pawn islands, um, which means that basically black has this amazingly compact pawn structure of just one island, which means that these pawns are better at defending each other. These pawns can defend each other more than white's pawns, because white's pawns are separated into two separate islands. So we have one island of pawns here, and these pawns can defend each other very well, but then we have one island here that's all off on its own, and these two pawns are going to have a very difficult time defending each other. They can only each defend each other collectively once, whereas these pawns have buddies next to it, where like, say, the F pawn, for example, could be defended twice if necessary. So having fewer pawn islands makes your pawns a little bit stronger. So black has fewer pawns, but the pawns that he does have are very strong because he has a better island. And the weak pawns that white have happen to be located on, this, on these two open files that black will eventually put both of his rooks on and occupy and put pressure on this B and A pawn. And the theory goes that this should compensate black for being down a pawn, is these, these strategic ideas. So that's more of a modern gambit, is we gambit for um, strategic ideas, right? So we have classical gambits like the Evans gambit, or of course, you know, you have another classical kind of gambit like the King's gambit, where we gambit away this pawn, but now we have two pawns in the middle of the board, so we have these central pawns in the middle of the board, and that's supposed to make a whole lot of sense. And then we have our, our modern kind of gambits, like, you know, the Banco gambit. And then, of course, you have your gambits that aren't really gambits, right? So you have, like, your pseudo-gambits, right? So the Queen's gambit 
is when we play c4, and I guess it's kind of called the Queen's Gambit because it's similar to the King's Gambit. You know, in the King's Gambit, we play e4 and f4, and since we started with our King Pawn, we call that the King's Gambit. But the King's Gambit really is a gambit. It's actually very difficult to get that pawn back, whereas in the Queen's Gambit, this isn't actually a gambit. We call it a gambit, but it's very difficult for black to keep that pawn. Um, actually, white can get it back immediately with queen to a4 followed by queen takes c4. There's actually no really good way to hold it. So the queen's gambit isn't really even a gambit. The queen's gambit is kind of a pseudo uh, kind of gambit. And then, of course, there's other gambits that defy logic. Um, there's gambits that people play where they don't seem to get any clear advantage gambiting the pawn in center or in strategic play, but maybe they do it because maybe they're playing for some specific tricks. I always have kind of a hard time understanding these kinds of gambits because I, I just think not all gambits are necessarily um, sound, right? So one that I've always had a hard time with is the Smith-Mora gambit. And the main reason I have a hard time understanding the compensation for this gambit is because, okay, we have a Sicilian and it's basically your open Sicilian pawn structure and we're down a pawn, right? But let's just take a look at like center and development versus what if I just played like an open Sicilian? So if I just played like a regular open Sicilian, I would go knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, and they would play knight f6 and I would play knight c3. I still have a huge development lead, right? And black, of course, has all these options available to him at this point. I still have a huge development lead over my opponent, and I'm going to actually experience a, a huge development lead for a while because black actually usually ends up making a lot of pawn moves here, and white usually, you know, really kind of picks up the pace in development. And this knight is going to be very aggressively posted on the d4 square. So let's go back to the Smith Mora and let's just look at the difference just from a pure strategic point. Is after, say, d4, c, d4, c3 here takes. This knight is going to end up going to f3, and I would have to two-step it to make it to d4. So we could actually end up with an identical position. But in this position, it's, it, 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 all the tempos are the same. So we actually have an identical position here where it's still black's move. The only difference being is that this pawn has disappeared. So in theory, the tempos in the smith mora gambit versus a regular open Sicilian are exactly the same. So the only way the smith mora works is the smith mora is making this argument, well, as long as I keep my knight on f3, I actually have an extra tempo. So in the smith mora gambit, white is really trying to prove that just that one extra tempo that he's gaining for that pawn is worth it because he's going to utilize that knight, especially to help push this pawn, hopefully to the e5 square. And he's going to try to make certain tricks work, especially with like e5 in conjunction with bishop c4, and then sometimes there's a uh, little kind of devilish tricks where you can, you know, potentially um, sometimes try to win the queen or something like this. So like you could play bishop c4, for example, and if black fell asleep at the wheel and played something like a6, like his regular Nidorf, you can push through with a move like e5, and then if they take, you've got this cute little trick here. So you're utilizing kind of this knight's position to support these these pawn pushes to create these tricks. All that being said, I still don't really understand the Smith Mora because in my heart of hearts, I just can't believe that one tempo is enough to give up a pawn. I feel like we need at least two, maybe three, or we need something really concrete, like some really cool strategic concept like in the Banco, or we need like better center control. We need something that we can really sink our teeth into to say, hey, I really have compensation. So like, I don't feel like all gambits are the same. I don't feel like every single gambit is sound. I feel like there's a lot of gambits that are sound. I feel like, you know, the queen's gambit is probably sound of what well, I think the queen's gambit is very sound. Of course, it's not probably sound. It's very sound. Um, it, it's not even a gambit. Um, I feel like, you know, the Evans gambit, this classical gambit, I feel like it's very sound. I feel like you can play the Evans gambit and I think you do have compensation for this pawn. And I feel like some of the more classical gambits are very sound. And the Banco gambit, I'm not sure actually about the Banco gambit. Uh, truth be told, I, I lost a lot of sleep one time thinking about the Banco gambit and thinking about, you know, how the compensation in the Banco gambit actually works. 
And I'll tell you, I, I, I honestly don't know if it's um, worth the pawn or not worth the pawn, but black clearly has some kind of compensation for this pawn. Um, is it enough for the pawn? I don't know. And that's part of the fun of gambits. That's the appeal. You get to uh, put a question to your opponent. You get to make your opponent play your game where you understand where your pieces are supposed to go and you understand what the ideas are. And that's basically gambits. That's how gambits work in chess. Um, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess. And again, if you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.